Hi, I'm Lori and today I'm going to show you how to make some Spanish rice. To get started, you'll need some fresh tomatoes, onion and garlic. I cheat a little by using Fiesta Spanish rice seasoning. And definitely you always want to have some ground comino. Salt, pepper, some rice obviously, and some oil. Let's get started. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and chop our tomato and there's different sizes, it really depends on your preference. I don't mind having some chunkier pieces of tomatoes, some people like smaller slices or slivers, it's really up to you. And while you're cutting your tomatoes, you can actually have your pan um, heating up a little. So that way when you put your oil and rice, it's all good to go. This doesn't take that long, so. Okay, so our tomatoes are good to go. I'm gonna grab a bowl for these. So we're just gonna put these tomatoes to the side so we have some room to cut our onion. Same thing with the onion, different preferences. Some people like big slivers, some like chunks. You can really put as much as you want. I personally like to use, um, depending on the size of an onion, I'll probably use a little less than half, usually like a quarter. And then once you get it cut up, if you think that you need more, you can always cut a little bit more. And you probably noticed that I didn't clean my cutting board. Honestly, it's all gonna go together in the same bowl, so it doesn't matter that we have that tomato still on the cutting board. It's actually gonna taste really yummy. It's a great combination. You'll find tomato and onion are a staple in many Mexican dishes. There's nothing you really can't cook. Um, or mess up by using an onion. So I'm gonna put this in the bowl with the tomato, keep it to the side for now. And the next thing I'm gonna do is chop up some garlic, which is another common uh, piece in different Mexican dishes. So depending on the size of your garlic cloves, um, you can put three uh, garlic cloves, you could even put as many as five or six if you wanted to. I guess if you really loved garlic, you could. And you can chop it as finely as you'd like as well. I do try to get it a little bit smaller than I would if I just chopped it um, by hand, but I definitely don't like it as small as if you used a garlic press. I just feel like it's just a little too small. I love garlic, so this works well for me. Okay, so now we have all of our ingredients ready to go. We can start going to the pan and prepping our rice. Okay, so now it's time to get cooking. We're gonna go ahead and turn our stove top to medium. We're gonna let the pan heat up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna put some oil in here. Honestly, I don't measure it out. I kind of just get enough that I think will cover the rice and cover the bottom of the pan. I like to use olive oil, although you can use vegetable oil. It's your preference, but I have extra virgin olive oil on hand all the time. Thank you, Rachel Ray. So you just put in enough to um, basically cover the pan. And we're gonna put our rice in here once this is heated up. And this is gonna help the rice to brown. We do that before we add water. It's gonna add a pretty color to the rice. It'll make it really great for the rest of the week. So to make your rice, you're going to use one cup of rice. Now, I personally grew up where grandma always had rice and beans in the refrigerator ready to go to add to any meal. So I like to make two cups at a time. So you put your two cups in. And you mix it around in the oil, making sure that you're getting it coated really well. I like to use a spatula to turn my uh, rice. I just feel like it helps me to grab everything and flip it easier. My husband argues with me, says I need to use a spoon, but I'll do what I want. He likes the rice anyway. So you just get it evenly coated with all of the oil and then you leave it for about a minute, let it brown a little on that side, and then we're gonna go ahead and mix it up. And we'll mix it just until we see that it's the right shade of brown. Okay, so you can hear um, the rice actually heating up. So I'm gonna go ahead and 
just flip it and stir it every once in a while. It's not going to get really brown, but you will see a color change. And that's when I decide that it's time to start throwing in the onions and the garlic and the tomato. I like to let the onion and garlic saute a little bit before I go on to the next step. So our rice is starting to get brown. At this point, I like to add the onion and the garlic just to let it saute a little. Not everyone does this. Um, this is just my preference. And I make a little whale where you can put your onions in there and hear that beautiful sound of onions heating up. If the tomato get in there, it's not an issue at all. And then put in your garlic. I'm just gonna mix it around. And while you're letting this saute, you can go ahead and get your water. Now for every cup of rice, you're gonna use two cups of water. And as I told you earlier, I like to make two cups of rice at a time, so I'm gonna use four cups of water. Make sure that you mix this, otherwise um, adding the onion can make the rice stick to the pan. So just make sure that you're continuously mixing it to where you're ready to add the water in. I'm just gonna grab my water. And let's hear that sizzle. So now we're gonna go ahead and turn the heat up to high because we wanna bring this to a boil. And while we're waiting for that as well, we're gonna go ahead and throw in all of our tomato and the good stuff, the seasonings. Now, as I said earlier, I cheat. I use the Fiesta Spanish rice, but if you want uh, Spanish rice seasoning, but if you didn't have this, you could easily use your own seasonings: um, comino, a little bit of paprika, salt, pepper, uh, some garlic powder if you didn't put in fresh garlic. And this seasoning asks for one full tablespoon for every cup of rice that you make. I personally think that that's a little too salty and the flavor is just not exactly the same as my grandma used to make it. So what I like to do is I'll actually add three quarters of a tablespoon for every cup of rice. And then to make it more to my flavoring, um, my sister and I always joke because when our grandma would teach us how to cook, she never had measurements for anything. She just made it the way she made it. And um, I actually kind of got to the same point with my rice. I don't know exactly how much comino I put in there. I kind of just shake it until the top of it is covered. And there's a certain point where just the smell of the comino reminds me of the food that she used to make. So I kind of just, I honestly can't even say how much I put in here. You're also going to add some salt and some pepper. You don't want to add too much salt. You can always add salt to it later. If you really like garlic, I highly recommend using a garlic pepper. That's really delightful. Now, this is the easiest part. You just mix it, let it come to a boil. Okay, so it's coming to a boil, and when it's at a full boil, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it to a simmer. I'm gonna use this lid to cover it and let it cook for 17 minutes. That's what I found works best on my stove. So we're just gonna let it cook and we'll come back in 17 minutes and see how it turns out. Okay, time's up. Let's see how our rice turned out. Let me just take the lid and look at the yummy goodness. 
take it off the heat and I like to fluff it with a fork. Oh, that's perfect. It's the perfect consistency. It's not mushy. It's not dry. This is going to be delightful with all of our meals this week. And I'm just going to let it cool off. And once it's cooled, you actually you can start eating it now if you'd like. It's a little hot. But uh, once it's cooled, you can just put it in some containers, have it in a refrigerator. It heats up very easily and you can add it to any meal. So now it's my favorite time. Time to plate. I honestly could just eat a whole bowl of rice. I don't even need a meat or anything else to go with it. Super yummy. See how it turned out. Mmm. Very good. I'm gonna go eat this. <laughs> <laughs>